Brewers Fair at uh, Atfield and behind me is Premier Inn where I'm staying for the four nights so I'm going to go up to bed now watch a bit of telly I'll catch you tomorrow Good morning! It's not so nice as yesterday is it? Is it still raining? Oh my goodness but we're going to be sunny and lovely in here aren't we? Are you feeling jolly? Yes! Who was here yesterday? Hands up! Oh yeah, my old face. Not old, I don't mean old face. Come on, babe, why don't we paint the town? We're ready. And all that jazz. I'm gonna rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And again. And all that jazz. Come on, babe, I know we will be spot. To me, let's see you singing. Going stars with George and Mildred uh, reunite on the stage here, hosted by Linda Regan, and it's going to be fantastic. Uh, they'll be chatting, having a good time, and reuniting. That's a bit, after quite a few years, I think. So yeah. many, many memories. Yeah, yeah, that should be fantastic. And then we have, oh, we have John Layton. Do, do you remember the song? loads and loads of stuff on Ryan's Express. So that's exciting. That yeah. takes us up to lunch. And then we have Kate Garner, who, excitingly, um, pays a unique tribute to talking pictures in song. She's the daughter of Chaz Hodges, who, of Chaz and Dave. Please, can you sit there? You can tell I'm the wife, can't you? You've got nothing on me. Very bossy. We were doing Man About the House, um, and when it was decided we were going to have this splendid uh, uh, spin off, and George and Mildred was born. And it was decided, obviously, we were going to need a little boy for our next door neighbour, played by Norman and Sheila first. And uh, at one time, Peter Fraser Jones, who was the director and producer of our series, and uh, affectionately known as PFJ, he said to me at one point after a man about the house rehearsal, he said, Brian, would, would you awfully mind doing a little scene with a, a few boys that we've got as a possibility to play Tristan? And I said, yes, 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 I, of course I would. Uh, I said, I gave me a script. He said, these are the lines, and the boys have been given a, a script as well. So I played my, this little scene in front of about six or seven little boys, all with the different degrees of talent and things, obviously. One or two of them had come from some form of training, had drama at school, uh, and they were spot on. They had, the, uh, they had all the words, and they got it right, and that was okay. And then they said, we just got one more little boy, um, and his, his name is um, Nicholas Owen. That's what I write. Thank you. And we started again. A little, little. <laughs> what's the, she, she, I think he was taller than you are now. Yeah. <laughs> so, this little fellow came on, 
and uh, it's quite shy, really, uh, and, and, and sort of shook hands, and I said, you're okay with you? I said, fine, well, off we go, and we started to do this little scene, and suddenly Nick stopped, and I looked and said, uh, what, what's the matter? He said, I think I've forgotten the next line. <laughs> and I said, don't worry, I'll do it all the time. <laughs> and I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's make it up. He said, oh, all right. And we made it up. We did a scene off our cuffs and played along without drawing or anything of that nature. And then little thing, I said bye-bye to him, and off he went. And then PFJ, the director, came to us afterwards and he said to my, <coughs> said to me, he said, um, look, thank you for doing that with those uh, little boys. It was so helpful for us up in the box. Um, any ideas you think was possibly the best? I said, oh, undoubtedly. I said, there's no mistaking that. That last little boy is <coughs> not knowing. He is a natural. And yeah. they said, well, we're so glad, because that's what we thought as well. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. It's going to be a bit tricky now. person to have topped the chart to come from Frinton on Sea. That is an accolade in itself. The lovely John Layton, he never changes. Like the day made Johnny remember me. Um, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Fantastic. So, John, you made the trip from Britain. Let, let's start because there's so much to get through in your career. Uh, Biggles. Biggles is in black and white, so they wouldn't know whether you were ginger, orange, you know, whatever. No. Uh, but that was a great start for you, Biggles, wasn't well, it? Yes, yes. Uh, and ginger, you were. I, uh, <coughs> yeah, I played the part of ginger, and, uh, and you're quite right with black and white. So, uh, had it been in colour, I probably wouldn't have got the wrong. So, I suppose I was fortunate that it was black and white. But uh, that was the very first thing after repertory in York that I, I came back to London and uh, I, uh, I found myself an agent. That was difficult. And, uh, and my agent then put me up for, for Biggles for the part of Ginger. Ginger Hebblethwaite has a name for you Ginger Hebblethwaite. Brilliant. But you, you never know whether you're going to get something. I mean, there's so many thousands of young hopefuls uh, that go for auditions <laughs> and your parents are saying, well, you know, it might not happen, you be prepared. And suddenly you've got yourself a gig, you're on TV and everything is great. Well, yes, it's, it's, uh, it all happens very quickly in the end. Um, I went up to Man Manchester to uh, um, <clears throat> test for, for, for Ginger and uh, I had to wait some time actually before they finally said that yes, you've got the role. A good two or three weeks, and uh, but and then it all happens, and suddenly it all becomes normal. You're playing a, 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 one of a leading role in a television series, and uh, it comes it becomes the norm really, and. Uh, uh, but there you are. I mean, it, it, it's, it's difficult. I mean, it, it was difficult actually finding an agent. Um, that, that was probably more difficult than actually getting the role of Chelsea. Every time I felt blue, crappy lights, would you sit there in the gloom? Love you don't in the room. And I thought each time I whisper, I love you, love you.
have a more civilised discuss. Uh, <laughs> but that was yeah. a tube, so it's very London, isn't it? Yeah, London, no, London. I was surprised. I, I thought it was going to be mainline trains. I mean, when I travelled with my parents on the train, I had to look smart. I probably wore my blazer, maybe a tie, yeah. uh, and we were called for tea. There was first and second sitting for tea. Uh, and well, you He's one of those old trucks, you know, you push yeah. it up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it was great. We had, you know, had first and second afternoon sittings. It was, it was lovely. I mean, I, I enjoyed traveling by train. I guess one of the only problems then was everybody smoked. Uh, so that was probably the uncivilized part of it. Yeah. How many people had uh, went for tea on the train? <laughs> <laughs> I must have had everybody else's. <laughs> I loved it. I always loved yeah. after the tea. Gosh, boy. <laughs> I mean, we were lucky we had a ticket. <laughs> I had a cup of tea. <laughs> so it wasn't civilised then. <laughs> well, my, 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 my class was the tune as a Londoner. So, um, and you were lucky if you could get in the train, let alone a seat. Uh, and so you, and you, were, you were all second class because it was classless. It was every person for them, a moot person for themselves on the tube, especially Russia. Does anyone remember the train to Russia? Well, how we all didn't get arrested, I don't know. <laughs> because what could you do? You pushed in, you know, like a sardine thing. It's an entirely different image. You're squashed on the tube. I, I'm on an, an airy train, not going too fast, so you can see the rivulets coming down the window from the rain uh, when you're a kid, which is why well, no, I go so fast. Do you know, Mike, the funny thing is it doesn't rain in a tube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is it, it is, it's very strange. Really, yeah. Yeah. There are, there are, yeah, I'm going to say, the, yes. the, 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 on the inside. Yes, 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 I yes, can imagine yes, so, yeah. yeah. But no, I, I remember on the, on, on the mainline trains, the, the windows had a leather strap. Yes. So yes. you could push the window up and put the strap to wherever you wanted. It never quite worked. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's, a, it's an odd way of doing it when you think about it. Lift it up, put the strap on number two. Yes. Uh, and then it always had, uh, do not lean out of the window. Yeah. And every wise guy changed it to do not clean soot off the window. <laughs> and, uh, everybody did that. Well, do lean out. Hmm? The knot was, was scratched out. So it said, do lean out of the window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and all the carriages had uh, pictures of somewhere, whether it's Truro or Cumbria, wherever yes. it was. Uh, each, each corner had a, a lovely picture that was yeah. screwed in. Wouldn't be screwed in now. Yeah. They'd be able to yeah. take them. But. but no, it's. Uh, there were the tube, and then where I lived, there was the, uh, the Richmond line, which I used to get to my first job to Harleston, from South Hampstead to Harleston. And that was interesting. But you remember those doors? You could never open them. You had to sort of put your hand inside and open it from the inside, and you, the train started moving. <laughs> Well, they'd open the doors, wouldn't they? They'd want to be like on the running board, yes. ready to go. Yeah. You you did get um, rain on the underground trains when you got to East Finchley. Yes, yes, but that's not underground. No, that's true. <laughs> but it was an underground train. <laughs> I, I love the, uh, the civil service <laughs> company with the, the leather luggage, where you had like a large leather case and a second one. <laughs> And there was always a porter. There was always a porter. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we used to take our own porter, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so if you came from In fact, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> and you never tipped me then. Uh -huh. Porter, coming from Kilburn, that means something different. Who knows what porter is? Guinness. Yeah, no, I, think I think the steam was rather a civilised way, the leather suitcases, the afternoon tea. Uh, you, I think you missed out, Bob. I think you missed out. Absolutely. <laughs> they really should bring it all back, shouldn't they? But mind you, it was constant. You, you could go on them. I remember going to the seaside with your folks and how many kids we had, I don't know, but seemed to win some somewhere. But, um, and you'd all go for the day and 
standard get change out of pound or whatever it was. Now, imagine five of you going to, you know, from where to where, it would be two or three hundred pounds. So what would yeah, the rest, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's if you well, the answer, snook a few in. Is rail travel more civilised now, or was it more civilised back in the day? I think it's cleaner now. It was pretty grubby in those days for different reasons, for steam and, and stuff like that. But I don't think people are more civilised now, I'm afraid. Well, I don't know if they don't say anything. You sit there with these blessed... What are they call the, What they call Thumbs. The but, you know, I, I, I travelled up the train the other day, and I watch, and, you know, it, it's, and all these people just sit there. Whole rows of them. You think, oh, Lord, is that it? And they're all telling their partner where they are. Oh, we just arrived at sunset. Yeah, we know, we all know, we're all here. Yeah. <laughs>
I had Gina Lola Bridget to at the end of my bed. And, uh, <laughs> That's because if you were in Shawshank and you were trying to escape. <laughs> That's very true. And, uh, she, uh, and uh, I was just trying to explain that when I went into the rap, it was um, uh, Frankie Vaughan. Really? Uh, Frankie Vaughan, who didn't live far from here. Uh, Frankie got me into all the rats. If you haven't checked out all, all the things that Vince uh, uh, said, it, it's um, fantastic. If you check out the the, the website, go and all the water rats. Hello, what's up with you, Brenda? I'm sitting in a puddle these days. Well, that's what you get for making me so wild. Going down to London, going down to London, we're going to have a smashing time. sit around with Sydney and um, Dudley and Colin and I and we just sort of go through it and then of course when you've improvised then you've got to remember what you've said and the contemporary girl was tight right and busy. Well, you let me know. Yeah, come up to me five. No, I left as soon as I could. You better walk over Incredible! Isn't it lovely? That is, that is really is. I mean, you are. And, and the one you did for Mike was fab as well. 
So do, do you want to say anything? Yes, we do. It's got a gorgeous face. So, Caroline, how do you feel with this masterpiece? I feel delighted. I think he's such a clever talented artist. This is That's Lee. very nice. This is Lee and Caroline. he's done an amazing job. Thank you very really. much. Really, it's so beautiful. And I'm thinking Thanks. about changing the hair. It was a good look. It was a good look. <laughs> it, was a good, it is a good look. I, I, Fantastic. I think the, the blue, you see. No, I love the turquoise. But the turquoise. because you do the, the and, horror thing, and the yellow, turn. I wonder if there's yeah. blood coming down. Yeah, no, I <laughs> love <laughs> it. I love 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 it. I love